once again, fans, good afternoon and welcome to Historic Rec Hall on the campus of the Pennsylvania State University for today's matchup featuring the Hofstra Pride and your Penn State Nittany Lions. It's a raucous environment in Rec Hall. Hofstra has made the trip to Happy Valley. Hello, I'm Dylan Price alongside Adriana Gallucci. It's loud. It is ready for Sunday matinee wrestling action. The number one ranked Nittany Lions playing host to the Pride in what should be an exciting dual meet here from Rec Hall. As I mentioned, Dylan Price, Adriana Gallucci. Adriana, the Nittany Lions opened their dual meet slate last Sunday against Lehigh. Lehigh was able to hang with them for the first few matches, but eventually the Nittany Lions, as they do, as they have for the past few years, pulled away, took down Lehigh 30 to 10, and got their first dual meet win of the season. Now they're back here at home yet again, playing host to Hofstra. It, as I mentioned, it is a loud, packed environment, unlike anything Hofstra has faced yet this season. This is their first away duel. A lot of expectations for the Nittany Lions this season, but for Hofstra, an opportunity to come in here into a foreign environment and go up against some of the top ranked wrestlers in the nation. Yes, if you're Hofstra, you're coming into the most rowdy environment in collegiate wrestling. You're facing the number one team in the nation on their home turf at the historic Rec Hall. It says on the video boards here at Rec Hall, wrestling lives here in Happy Valley, and yes, it does. Number one team in the nation, and if you're Hofstra, you just had a pretty ugly dual loss, 51 to nothing to Ohio State. You're a very freshman-heavy roster, Hofstra's freshman-heavy wrestling today. You're coming out, you're getting your guys' experience against some of the best in the nation. It's an opportunity that Coach Papadatos was very excited about. They scheduled the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Penn State Nittany Lions, and the North Carolina State Wolfpack all before they even opened conference duels in order to give their guys an opportunity to go up against some of the top guys in the nation. Tonight, we are set to go here from Happy Valley, and we are underway. Dual meet action between the 0-1 Hofstra Pride and the number one ranked Penn State Nittany Lions, who sit at undefeated. Brayden Davis and Dylan Acevedo are set to go. The junior from Sayerville, New Jersey, 0-4 on the young campaign. Brayden Davis, 7-0 in his young collegiate career. Jockeying for position in the center of the mat at the Penn State Nittany Line logo. Davis tries to shoot the leg early here in the first few moments. Davis able to bring him down, but no points awarded just yet. Davis trying to turn Acevedo over. Precarious position here for Davis, though, if he can give up any leverage to Acevedo, the junior, a little bit more experienced, but on a big stage this afternoon here from Rec Hall. 2.15 to go in the initial round, and points on the board for Braden Davis. Able to nab a quick three and jump out to an early lead. So the takedown from Davis, giving the freshman an advantage here early. And now trying to push down and tabulate some riding time. Up over 20 seconds now, the freshman. Acevedo trying to stand up, escape, get away, and get on the board here early in this match. The inaugural match of this duel, Penn State's second home duel of the campaign, as mentioned in the open, toppled Lehigh last Sunday. Could hear a pin drop in Rec Hall, but at any moment this raucous crowd could burst. Davis now popping up with Acevedo, going to the far side of the mat, and eventually will allow him to escape. So a point on the board, the initial one for Acevedo, but Davis still leading 3-1 with the takedown and was able to tabulate 54 seconds of a riding time advantage here. Strong start for the freshman, Adriana. Yeah, what a, what a great start for Davis so far. 125 is a class that Penn State struggled with their last time. Gary Steen lost the first inaugural 125 batch of the dual season to Sheldon Seymour. Um, so Braden Davis coming out, having a strong performance so far. As mentioned, Davis looking sharp in open tournaments thus far. 7-0 and on the campaign. This is his first dual meet action. First time in front of this rec hall crowd. They'll go off the mat. On the near side, just over by the scorer's table. About 40 seconds or so this opening period. 54 seconds, riding time advantage goes to Davis and the 3-1 score thus far, but still a lot of time to go here. The junior versus the freshman. Opening match of the duel. Some hand fighting in the center of the mat. Both guys still trying to feel each other out. Despite Davis getting that early takedown, 
And refs will call a break. Starting the neutral position in the center of the mat here with about 23 seconds to go in the first. Davis tries to shoot back down. Acevedo swallowed it up right away. Not going to allow him any leverage here after already squandering the takedown earlier on. Now pushing him to the far side of the mat. He tries to drop the legs and see if he can establish some leverage on the youngster. Working for position. He fires the right leg down, but quickly pops back up. Now this time brings him down, but time will expire in the first, and Davis breaks out to a 3-1 advantage. Nice start from Davis so far, able to get that takedown point early, leading 3-1 going into the second period. Davis sitting at 28 in the intermat rankings right now at 125. Hasn't broken into that top 25 yet, but a win in his first dual action also would take him to 8-0 and likely start bringing him into that conversation. As Adriana mentioned, 125, a tough spot for the Nittany Lions, not just this season, but in past seasons. Battled injury with Robbie Howard, Gary Steen figuring things out in his true freshman season last season. Davis been a bright spot. Davis starting down, Acevedo on top. Davis trying to break away, rip the hands free of Acevedo. Both men stand up, pushing to the far side of the mat. Acevedo still in control, but Davis able to pop up here. The riding time has been negated slightly from Acevedo there with him starting on top. Now down to 29 seconds for Davis. But a point was awarded to Davis on the escape. So 4-1 sits the score with 1.20 to go in the second. Adriana Davis, cool, calm, collected in his rec hall debut. Definitely not a ton of action just yet. These two wrestlers feeling each other out, waiting to see what the pace and the cadence of this match is so far. Now a little bit more leg work, both guys firing, trying to see if Either will make a mistake. They're back in the center of the mat. Davis drops down, as does Acevedo. They go punch for punch, meeting one another here. Under a minute to go in the second period. It's been a successful one for Dylan Acevedo. Negated part of that riding time, but did give up the point on the escape. Acevedo looked to shoot down for just a moment. Student Athlete Advisory Committee team rep. Also highly stouted academic. As Davis shoots a leg, Davis brings down Acevedo, and Davis, a takedown. The youngster making his mark in his rec call debut. He leads 7-1 with under 30 seconds to go in the second. Davis now in control, building that riding time back up. The clock will tick. It was at 54 seconds before Acevedo would negate some of it. Now looking back at around 50 seconds as time ticking down here in the second period. And Braden Davis in complete control with a six-point advantage. Davis moving with Acevedo to the far side of the mat. Davis trying to drop down, see if he can pull Acevedo's weight down with him. But nonetheless, the second period will expire. Davis, his second takedown, though, in this debut match, looking sharp. Sharp is the word to describe Braden Davis. Again, rec hall debut. He leads 7-1. He has two takedowns already. What a great performance from Braden Davis thus far. Of course, if this is the first college wrestling you've watched in this campaign, what are you doing? you got to check it out. This has already been a hot season thus far. A lot of top-ranked teams, a lot of top-ranked action. But one of the biggest changes this year, all takedowns now three points. NCAA saying it was done to reward risk-taking and offensive action. Well, the youngster's been taking some risks, and he's been rewarded. Two takedowns and an escape have him up at a 7-1 advantage in the final period. He'll start on top. Acevedo will have an opportunity to try to grab the escape here. But for Davis, the opportunity to build his riding time. Up over a minute now. Six-point advantage. Trying to work towards possibly even a major decision and see if Penn State can nab a bonus here in this inaugural match. Davis in control on top in the center of the mat. Acevedo pops up, Davis will pop up with him. Davis looked like he was gonna try to shoot the leg, and now bringing down Acevedo. Not enough for the takedown, but just enough to put Acevedo back in his place and establish a little bit more ground game for Davis. Davis continuing to milk the riding time. Now at around a minute and 40 seconds and counting. A minute 21 to go in the bout. Davis leading by six, Penn State. Sitting a few starters, we'll talk about it in a few, Bo Bartlett. Greg Kirkfleet projected amongst them as Acevedo nabs the escape. The freshman getting an early win and nabbing some points for Penn State would be big in terms of overall dual meet control. Under a minute to go in the inaugural bout of the afternoon. So glad you could join us here on Big Ten Plus. Davis tried to shoot the leg. Acevedo pushing him down now, pressing him in the center of the mat. 
Right by, right side of that Lion logo. Minute and 52 seconds, the riding time advantage for Davis. The point of the Lakers start to move to the center of the 38 seconds to go about. As it would stand, Davis would nab the point. See if he tries to go for a takedown here and maybe make it a major. But he leads 7 2, would nab the decision if things stand. Acevedo will see if he gets risky here. The junior trailing by five. Under 20 seconds to go. The opening match. Both guys standing. Just maintaining position. Davis tries to shoot. Things getting fired in the final seconds. And Davis nabbing a takedown. And now in major decision territory, we'll just let time tick away. Braden Davis, his rec hall debut, punctuated with a major decision victory over Dylan Acevedo. Man, I don't know if you can ask for a better rec hall debut. The crowd was into it. The crowd loved it. Two takedowns from Braden Davis and then the major decision. What a great performance from the youngster. So Penn State will break out to a big lead. And at 125, a weight class, Penn State has had question marks galore for the past two seasons. Braden Davis looking like at 8-0, he might just be a possible answer. Adriana going through that a little bit more here. Braden Davis, you were here last week, got the opportunity to see Gary Steen on the mat. Braden Davis, an opportunity with Steen and Robbie Howard, both a little bit uncertain, could pull away at this weight class and be the guy going into the heart of the dual meet schedule in the new year. Yeah, definitely. I said before, watching Steen the last weekend, he looked very unsteady against Sheldon Seymour from Lehigh. Again, lost that match. Robert Howard, we haven't seen yet, but Braden Davis, man, after that performance, there's definitely a clear window for him in this 125 class. Aaron Nagao enters in just his second time here at Rec Hall, the Minnesota transfer from La Habra, California. Highly touted, succeeding. Roman Bravo Young coming out of the gates, firing away here against Arbite. Kicks the leg out, abs a takedown, and coming out guns a blazing is Aaron Nagao. Nagao looked like he was going to try and shoot a bow and arrow here, but instead we'll just hop on the back of Arbite and build up the riding time. Using that pressure and pushing him down on the near side of the mat, just not allowing Arbite anything here in the onset. Ryan Arbite, the freshman, 0 and 3 on the campaign thus far. Had a 126 win, 38 loss high school record, finished second in Nassau Open. Talented youngster amongst a crowd of very, very good freshmen for Hofstra who are all getting the opportunity to go up against some top ranked competition. Nagao amongst the very best, sits at number four at 133. Four and one record on the campaign for him, just one loss. Lost to Ryan Crookham. Crookham who beat Vito Arouge, making that 133 picture a little less clear, but Nagao, Trying to get back on the wagon and pick up a big win and maybe some bonus points for Penn State against the youngster and Arbutt. Three nothing advantage after that early takedown. About 140 to go in the bout and well over a minute of riding time for Nagao who came out firing out of the gates but is instead just putting that pressure down on Arbutt on that near right side of the mat. It was definitely a difference in the uh, 125 match compared to the 133 match whereas both wrestlers in 125 kind of waited, felt each other out but Nagao came guns blazing out of this bout. Arbite gets the escape. We heard Levi Haynes say, sometimes you have to give a point to get a point. Right now here, Nagao, who was able to tabulate a minute and 24 seconds of riding time, letting Arbite up here to maybe see if he could go into a different position, which you now see him in, right by the eye of that Penn State logo, pressing down on Arbite near that center of the mat. Nagao trying to see if he can fire the legs as a ref will blow the whistle. set them back into neutral position in the center of the bat. About a, less than a minute to go in the opening period of this bout at 133. Aaron Nagao though in complete control, leading three to one. Both guys sticking a hand out here, jockeying for position. Nagao tries to shoot the leg. Nagao bringing him down. Now Nagao moving forward. Nagao able to get a takedown. And that was a pretty one, just clean and in control is Aaron Nagao in the onset of the contest. 
Well over a minute and a half of riding time here and under 30 seconds to go in the first round. A dominant controlled opening round from Nagao who adds another takedown here. And will now just press down on Arbite and see if he'll just let time expire here in the first period. Nine to two, the advantage for Nagao. Arbite was able to nab a point with a quick pull away. Once again, giving those points to get those points. Time expires in the first period, and Nagao has comes out guns a-blazing. 9 to his advantage. Just a clean performance from Nagao all around, coming out, coming in hot into this match, and then three clean takeouts to smooth out the first period. The top game for Aaron Nagao has been lauded. It's superb, but instead he'll just let Arbite go away here, grab the escape. 9-3, now the score, but Nagao trying to shoot that left leg of Arbite. He pops up, he's got Arbite in a precarious position, now kicks that right leg out, and that's another takedown for Nagao. Now a nine point advantage in major decision territory. Have to wonder if Nagao will start pressing towards a possible tech or a pin as they get pushed out on the left side of the mat. An opportunity for Arbite to catch his breath. The freshman getting huge experience against the top five ranked wrestler at 133, but thus far, not been able to put up a ton of a fight against Nagao. Valiant effort though, as he jockeys for position on the far side of the mat. Looked like he might have had an advantage there and was able to grab Nagao's head for a second, but Nagao swoops his leg out from under him, presses down, and gets another takedown. 15-4 now the advantage, 11 points here. And with a minute and 15 to go in the second period, Nagao approaching tech fall territory. And Adriana, another note here as Arbite nabs an escape, trims the deficit to 10. Two minutes and 29 seconds. Astounding total of riding time here for Nagao, who now gets another takedown. 13 point advantage for Nagao. He might be trying to put this one to a close in period two. And he might be successful doing so, the way that, that this is going. He hit the nail on the head, pressing down, and once again lets Arbite escape. Under a minute to go in the second period. And that'll be all she wrote. Aaron Nagao allowed Arbite to get back into it, get some escapes, but it was really for his own advantage. 21 to six in the final, the tech ball for Aaron Nagao. What a dominant performance from Aaron Nagao. Total 180 from his performance last weekend against Lehigh. He was in control the entire match. And again, you and I both spoke to Levi Haynes last week. He said sometimes you gotta give up points to score points. That's exactly what Nagao did. And is able to put Penn State further up on the board. Nagao would come out in complete control, dominate the match, control the match, and win 21-6. to So Penn State, they get a tech fall from Nagao, a major decision from the youngster in Braden Davis, and they have a nine-point advantage over Hofstra here. Through just two weight classes, an opportunity for Penn State to put themselves in control in the onset. And now we get to see two more unproven commodities. You'll see David Evans here at 141, filling in for Bo Bartlett. Last year in his sophomore year, 11 and four, was a solid number two at 141. Could be looking to be maybe the future at 141 with Bartlett in his senior season. Now the junior, Evans, Pennsylvania native, had three pins in a major last year. What are you looking for from Evans here at 141? I think if you're in the 141 class and Bo Bartlett is the top guy and you know that there's a possibility you get to take over for that weight class in the next seasons, you have to be on top of your game. Bo Bartlett, one of the most accomplished wrestlers on this Penn State roster right now. You know what you're up against. You know who people are comparing you to. You need to come out. You need to be your own person. So I'm excited to see David Evans. David Evans, this will be his first dual action representing at 141. Did wrestle in a duel in extras in Bloomington last year. Everything else has been tournament reps. So we're gonna see Evans here at 141, waiting to see who will go at 141 for Hofstra in just a moment here. But Hofstra's gonna need to try to get one back here against Evans. They don't have to go against Bartlett like they initially may have thought, but still gonna be a tough task against Evans. Evans gets announced, comes out to a nice reception from what has been a loud crowd here at Breck Hall. Two meets thus far for the Nittany Lions. Both have been here at home for the number one ranked team in the country. So for Hofstra, it'll be Alex Turley, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. Two and six record from him. 
He comes out with a little bit of an advantage here, but quickly popping up with that leg in tow is David Evans here in the first period at 141. And Evans sweeps the leg out, pushes him down, and gets a takedown on the near side of the mat. 3-0 advantage early here for the junior and Evans. What a great takedown by Evans. Took Turley off of his feet for that. Penn State leading 9-0 overall here. Evans trying to push that shoulder over here, not just content with building the riding time, was maybe even looking for an early shot at a pin. Now riding time up near 30 seconds in these first 40 seconds in the match. Evans coming out in control and leading 3-0. Similar strategy, Adriana, to what Nagao implicated just moments ago, coming out firing, getting that quick takedown, and then just pressing down and trying to wear out the opponent. Oh, exactly, and it was successful for Nagao, who picked up the win by major decision in the last weight class. So if Evans can keep that momentum up, he might have the same result. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Nittany Lions going right back to what worked against Hofstra just moments ago. Evans will start on top here as he looks to build that riding time advantage up over a minute now. Pressing down on Turley. Turley was able to work Evans out as they were pushed out near that scorer's table. So they start back in the center, and Turley now able to pick up a point with the escape. So a little bit of hand fighting and jockeying for position in the center of the mat. Evans actually being pressed down on now by the St. Louis, Missouri native and Turley. Turley actually has his legs wrapped around Evans here and control of Evans' left leg and part of that midsection. Best spot we've seen Turley in unless Evans can flip him over, which he's starting to do here. And another beautiful move, this time a well-orchestrated takedown from Evans in the center of the map puts him at a 6-1 advantage. Evans continuing to press down and build up that riding time. Well over a minute now, a minute and 15 here in the first period. Just about a minute to go. Once again, seeing these Penn State wrestlers using that riding time to their advantage, getting in control early, and it's worked thus far. We'll see if it continues to work for the junior and Evans, who's making his dual meet debut at 141 for the blue and white. Pressing down on Turley in the center of the mat, making Turley wear his weight, building that riding time up, and just dominating. Alex Turley wrestled in seven matches last year to the tune of a three and four record. 123 and 18 record in high school, was third in Missouri twice, fourth once in the state. 6-1 the score, under 20 seconds to go here in the opening period at a two minute plus riding time advantage for Evans. Who's looking impressive in his rec hall dual debut. And the first period will expire with Evans in complete control. Adriana, this is the same situation. You mentioned it a few moments ago that Nagao was able to put Arbite in. What does Turley have to do here to get back into this battle? Yeah, Turley just has to come out with some sort of momentum. We've seen Evans dominant throughout that first bout. So Turley has to come out with some sort of, sort of momentum to combat the strategy of Evans, which was the same one that Nagao used in the last weight class. Nice move there from Turley, but he Evans, quick legs was able to evade a possible takedown situation. Turley's got control of that leg of Evans. Evans working the escape. Both men coming out firing here. Turley starting on top, Evans on the bottom. 6-1 advantage still goes to Evans. Make it 7-1, he nabs the escape. After a little bit of jockeying for position there, actually saw Turley have maybe his best opportunity to nab a takedown we've seen thus far. But Evans, those quick, fast legs were able to evade him. And both men feeling each other out in the center of the mat. 2.01, the riding time advantage for the junior in Evans. Evans went to press down. Turley now in control, but Evans trying to grab the legs, and he does. He gave Turley a little, and then quickly took it away with another takedown. David Evans now a nine-point advantage, 10-1 with about a minute to go in the second period. And now, once again, doing exactly what he did in the onset of the contest, just working that riding time up. Now over two minutes and 20 seconds. Evans pressing down, just wearing Turley out. Now he grabbed that leg, possibly trying to see if he can shoot here. Evans might be trying to put an end to this one in the final 30 seconds of the second period. Gonna let Turley get on his knees a little here and see if maybe it can put him in a better spot to try and flip Turley over, and maybe, just maybe, blow the roof off Rec Hall 
in the 141 rate class with a pin. Evans now completely on his legs. Check that, he'll drop the right leg down as he's still trying to see if he can turn Turley over. Turley, valiant effort here, will not go down without a fight. Trying to get the escape. Evans brings him down. No points awarded just yet. And no points will be awarded on a potential takedown situation there. Evans, though, nine point advantage going into the third period in complete control. And looks like he's trying to put an end to it. What a great effort by Evans towards the ends of that there. He had one arm hooked around Turley's leg, had the other arm trying to go for the shoulder, looking to see if he could end this one early, but we'll see what happens in the third. Evans starts on top, will allow Turley to evade him. So Turley gets the escape, gets the point, 10-2. Evans wants more though. Evans has that leg in tow, brings down Turley for just a moment, but Turley now, Able to grab that lower body of Evans and now try to wrap his leg around here and see if he can get some points and possibly flip Evans over and maybe get a takedown. But Evans pops up. He's wearing Turley like a backpack and now quickly grabs that leg of Turley. And now Turley, who was just in control for just a moment, finds himself in another precarious position and sees up a takedown for David Evans. Beautiful maneuver from Evans there. Just like a takedown a few moments ago. Gave Turley a little and then quickly took it away. Turley tries to shoot the leg here, starting to approach desperation mode in the final 60 seconds, trailing by 10 points. Evans sweeps that leg out from under Turley again, grabs it, and then just quickly puts him down. 13-point advantage over the St. Louis, Missouri native. Will allow Turley to get back up, get the escape, but Evans going for the gusto. Evans, another takedown, puts this one to bed. David Evans. One of the best performances we've seen him put forth as a Nittany Lion. We mentioned what's going to happen at 141 next year. You don't want to look too far ahead with a world without Bo Bartlett, but David Evans making his case clear. He nabs a tech ball here in Rec Hall. As well, David, or David Evans with over three and a half minutes of riding time. Incredible performance from David Evans in front of this Rec Hall crowd. David Evans, 11-4 and four in his sophomore campaign, put forth a good one, but this was his first dual meet action at 141, and he begins his dual meet career here at Rec Hall, 1-0. So a nice win for Evans by Tech Fall. Another Tech Fall, back-to-back -back ones here. We saw Nagao get one. We saw Evans now get in on the action, and Penn State's lead continue to be built up. So we'll see Connor Pierce here at 149. Adriana, you and I had the opportunity to go to media this week. Shane Van Ness, it was gut-wrenching news for the Nittany Lions, out for the season at 149. Terrible news. Coach uh, Kale Sanderson told both Dylan and I that they're going to be without Van Ness for the remainder with an undisclosed injury. But in the 149 class, we have Connor Pierce today. And I watched Tyler Kasak wrestle last weekend against Lehigh. And Kasak looked great in his rec hole debut. So even though with that, being without Van Ness is a huge blow to the Nittany Lions, they still have two strong wrestlers in that class. Noah Tapia gets the go for Hofstra, the Moline, Illinois native. Mentioned he had a win over number 14, Jordan Williams of Oklahoma State at Cliff Keen Invitational just a short while ago. He's dangerous, but Connor Pierce getting the go here at 149. You mentioned Kasak. We're still going to see who gets the go at 149 for the remainder of the year for Penn State. Mentioned that Pierce will probably get some reps as the true 149er with Kasak usually coming in around 141. He's got that leg of Tapia in complete control. He's had it for about the first 45 seconds or so of the match and counting, but still no points for either man thus far. Actually looking to see if he can grab that other leg. He's got the left leg now, trying to see if he can grab the right with his right arm and maybe see if he can swing Tapia down and nab an early takedown. Fans possibly seeing if they can get a stalling call here, worked into by Tapia. Nothing coming yet. Tapia doing a great job using that upper body strength to evade Pierce. But now Pierce working him down and pressing that left shoulder. He's got the leg in control, now grabbing the headgear of Tapia. But Tapia, beautiful job here, wrapping his legs around and kicking out on Pierce. And actually now grabbing Pierce's leg. Refs will call the break. But Tapia, 
valiant effort here in the first minute or half or so put forth against Pierce. Yeah, Tapia looking dominant so far in this match, as you said, the Cliff Keen Las Vegas Invitational. He was one of the only shining stars for Hofstra. He went two for two with the win over number 14 in the weight class and coming out strong against Connor Pierce today at Rec Hall. Illinois state champion, two-time runner-up, went 52-1 and one last year in his senior season with a school record 40 pins. Adriana said he's a big fan of Kiss, trying to rock and roll all night into victory. Swings the left leg of Pierce here. And able to have a takedown and nearly pushing the shoulders over a Pierce. Tapia actually, with a three point advantage, was actually going for the gust though and trying to get the pin on the far side of the mat. Now pressing forward, he'll build a riding time advantage. First Hofstra wrestler this afternoon to get a takedown. As Adriana mentioned, one of the strongest points in this lineup coming out 149 with Tapia. 14-0 the advantage for Penn State, but Tapia trying to get Hofstra on the board, pressing down on Pierce on that far side of the mat. Both men's legs in the air wrapped around one another. Lower body has been key in this bout in this first period. Under 15 seconds to go. Pierce trying to just survive. Hofstra coaching. Staff actually looked like they were working for a stalling call here. And now six point advantage for Tapia. We've seen the Hostra coaching staff be up and on their feet pretty much the entire time, but especially while Tapia has been wrestling, they've been up and active. The red shirt freshman in Connor Pierce, Erie, Pennsylvania native, seven and one in open tournaments a year ago. The Harbor Creek High School rep put down by Tapia there, <coughs> but the officials Going to call for a moment here as going into a quick conversation with Coach Papadatos and this coaching staff. <laughs> New look coaching staff for Hofstra this season. Edinburgh standout Ernest James, former App State star Cody Russell, and Hofstra alum himself, Charles Small, making up this coaching staff that has been very loud, getting involved in this match. And Tapia himself has a six point advantage. Six nothing as time will expire in the first and up near a minute of riding time. The best performance we've seen from a Hofstra Pride representative thus far this afternoon. Yeah, it's been one of the bright points for a Hofstra so far this afternoon. It's been Noah Tapia. Tapia. We'll start on the bottom here in the center of the mat. Pierce on top. As we start the second period, Pierce finding himself trailing 6 0. Tapia looking very strong. Gets another point via the escape. And now grabs that right leg of Pierce and trying to flip the red shirt freshman over. Pierce trying to evade Tapia. Flips around a little bit here. Thought maybe if he can get on the ground, he can get a better position. And Tapia has that right leg. Wrapped around with his left leg. Refs will call for a break. Tapia has worked really well with that lower body, just controlling Pierce's legs and then also using his legs so actively that anytime he's had any ground game momentum on Pierce, well, he hasn't allowed Pierce really anything. Both men jockeying for position in the center of the mat. Tapia puts down Pierce yet again. Picks up another takedown, 10 nothing advantage. Tapia. Now in the major decision territory, also approaching a minute of riding time. With about a minute and five seconds to go in the second period. Major decision would put Hofstra on the board with their first four points if Tapia can preserve it. Under a minute to go in the second period. Connor Pierce being willed on by the Happy Valley faithful. But Tapia in complete control on top in the center of the mat and just building this riding time. Adriano, we saw him get a little bit more risky in that first period, in that back half, and try to flip the shoulders over. Gotta wonder if maybe he'll look to do that yet again here with complete control and the points advantage. I think he's gonna have to try, especially because he is in major decision. He's leading 10-0 at this point, why not? Pierce gets out the board with his first point via the escape. Under 20 seconds to go in the second period. Tapia just pushing Pierce's head down in the center of the map, both men on their feet. 
Tapia the nine point advantage and a minute 40 riding time built up. He'll inherit that and take that into the second period. And a strong, strong performance here at 149 from Tapia in the Hofstra Pride. So an opportunity for both men to take a beat. As you see a replay here, Tapia jumped the gun a little quickly. Now Tapia starting on top, the center of the mat, Pierce. That dangerous ground game that he can bring to the table. But being pressed down by Tapia, who has that minute and 55 second ride time advantage and counting. And he brings that here into the third period as well as that nine point advantage. Still in major decision territory, but Pierce, if he could work some points out of the board, could negate that. Pierce trying to avoid giving up another takedown to Tapia. Tapia pressing down on Pierce on the far side of the mat. Just pushing his upper body into Pierce's back and now kicking the legs and just making Pierce wear his weight. Trying to wear out entire Pierce here when he was on that right far side of the mat in the first period. When he was making Pierce wear his weight, he tried to flip him over and go for the pin. We thought maybe he would try a similar move in the center of the mat at the end of the second. We'll see if he works something into it here in the third, but he'll allow Pierce to stand up. Refs will call for a break. They'll go back to the center of the mat in neutral position, but Tapia, under a minute to go in the bout, over two minutes and 47 seconds of riding time advantage, has really dominated. Definitely, it's the first time we've seen Hofstra be dominant and be on top the entire time. Pierce's only point coming from an escape point. Tapia has been on point with it. Tapia pressing down on Pierce yet again on the near side of the mat just by that Penn State logo. Tapia trying to pull that leg out from underneath Pierce. Once again, he was successful and now pressing his upper body into Pierce's back. Nine point advantage, plus over three minutes of riding time accumulated by Tapia with under 20 seconds to go. Gave Pierce a little, thought maybe Pierce would get on the board with another escape, but then Tapia grabbed control of that left leg. Pierce runs away, gets the escape, and makes it an eight point advantage, but riding time over three minutes now, and it's where it'll finish, Noah Tapia. A big time win gets Hofstra on the board with their first points in a duel this season as Tapia able to secure the major decision. A strong performance from Noah Tapia, one of the most dominant wrestlers on this Hofstra Pride roster, able to pick up the win and you, like you said, Dylan, get Hofstra on the board. Tapia goes to four and seven on his freshman campaign. A brilliant performance here tonight. Coach Papadatos fired up, excited for that young man as he came in here against the number one team in the country and went up against Pierce at 149 and came out with the W. So we're approaching the next bout here as we were able to see Connor Pierce and David Evans on the mat. We'll step aside for just a moment here on Big Ten Plus. Thanks for hanging with us so far.
Welcome back to the action from Rec Hall. The number one ranked Nittany Lions hold a 14 to four lead in the duel thus far as we enter into the 157 category. Levi Haynes, the top ranked wrestler in the weight class, will tie it up with Zenian, the representative from Hofstra. Dylan Zenian, the Wyoming Seminary Prep High School product, Pennsylvania native, coming back to his home turf here. Squanders up an early takedown though to one of the very best in the country in Levi Haynes. This week, Adrian and I had the opportunity to talk to Levi and Coach Sanderson after Levi had a bit of a touch and go performance, but still came forth with a big victory against Lehigh in his inaugural bout of the season. Just said, get back on the mat, get back in action. Things were a little bit of rusty. He had to knock that rust off, but coming out here with a quick takedown and looking like that Levi Haynes of old. Yeah, Haynes said that he was ready to go. He knew, he knew, that, he knew that he was a little bit rusty during the Lehigh match, but he just wanted to get back out on the mat, shake that rust off, and he's doing that exactly in this match, already three points with a takedown. Zenny an 0-2 record in his college career thus far, the freshman, now getting the opportunity to come back to Pennsylvania where he spent his time in high school, the Hope Valley, Rhode Island product though. As Levi Haynes has him in tow, Levi Haynes looking for the pin, and Levi Haynes makes quick work of the youngster from Hofstra and nabs Penn State's second pin in a duel this season. And pouring on the points are the Nittany Lions. Levi Haynes got this one done early. From the Nittany Lions, Braden Davis making his rec hall debut was able to walk away with a win. Levi Haynes as well with a very quick pin in his bout to put it away. So gonna see what Messenbrink is going to do. Messenbrink and Waddell. Coming out, firing both men, trying to establish some kind of leverage in the onset of the contest. Waddell has that leg of Messenbrink. Messenbrink, the Cal Baptist transfer, came in after he spent his true freshman season out there. Going head to head, aggressive, and fighting in the onset of the contest between him and Waddell in these first 30 seconds or so. Messenbrink, the Heartland, Wisconsin native. As I mentioned, came over from Cal Baptist where he wrestled in just two bouts last year. Well, he was 2-0 with two pins, and he's 8-0 thus far this season with the Nittany Lions. Had his first taste of rec hall action last week and said he was elated as he gets a takedown here and welcomes himself back to rec hall in the following Sunday. Quick takedown has him up 3-0. Now he'll press down on Waddell and try to establish that riding time advantage. Messon Brink had a really great performance last weekend against Lehigh's Jake Logan. He won 7-2 with a tech fall, looking to see if he can carry that same momentum from his last performance into today's Sunday match. Messon Brink leading the way for Penn State this season with five tech falls on the young season. He's got control of Waddell on the far side of the mat, now looking to turn the shoulder over. Messon Brink, he's got one shoulder down. Can he get two? Messon Brink! Blowing the roof off Rec Hall. Said last week he was elated. He's loved Penn State his whole life, but he got an opportunity to head on the mat for the first time in his career. Said it was awesome, everything he dreamt of and more. And well, he gets his first pin here in front of the Happy Valley faithful. The second pin Penn State's been able to get today. Levi Haynes, the wrestler, right before him, right before we went to break, got the pin in his bout. So did Mitchell Messenbrink. Great performance from the Cal Baptist transfer. Messenbrink now up to 9-0 on the campaign. What a start to his collegiate tenure with Penn State. And now we saw the new now let's get ready to see the veteran, the old, Carter Starachi, with a lot on the line this evening. Number one ranked wrestler in the country in his weight class, three-time national champion. And tonight, well, this afternoon, he seeks his 60th consecutive win in a head-to-head -head bout. And getting a warm reception from the Rec Hall crowd. Going up against him this afternoon, he will have a tough task. He'll go up against Eric Schindel, Schindel actually went up against Messenbrink, fell 19 to three by a tech fall and a journeyman. So he's gone up against the Penn State wrestler this season, but the junior has never faced Sirachi at Rec Hall in this environment with a lot on the line for the Erie PA native. 
one of the most beloved wrestlers in this Penn State program, Carter Starachi. Talked about him, talked about him a little bit before on the broadcast. His accolades: three-time All-American, three-time NCAA champ, two times Big Ten champ, just to name the few. This crowd loves Starachi. Shindell, 77 and 39, wrestling in New York State action for the John F. Kennedy Cougars, the Merrick, New York native, going up against Starachi, who quickly gets a takedown. Starachi had that leg of Shindell. He'll let him step away for a moment on the far side of the mat. So Starachi doing what's been really the bread and butter for the blue and white this afternoon, coming out of the gates firing. And oh yeah, there's another takedown for Starachi. Starachi slides out and we'll hear a whistle, head back to neutral position. Penn State now leading 26 to four. Starachi the opportunity to get more bonus points here in this duel. Feeling out process with Shindell. Shindell able to put two points on the board thus far via escapes. Just about a minute into this first period, we saw Levi Haynes make quick work of his opponent. We saw Mitchell Messenbrink do the same with two first period pins. Can Carter Starachi get in on the action? Another takedown from him, now pressing down on Shindell on the near side of the mat, once again letting Shindell get up. And kind of pushing Shindell back out a little bit. So 9-3 the advantage for Starachi. Starachi trying to shoot the leg here on Shindell. Brings him down. That's another takedown. And now a 12-3 advantage for Starachi. He'll start to build up that riding time to about 20 seconds or so, but already a nine point advantage. He could look for a quick tech fall in this first period with still a minute and a half to go. Starachi pressing his body down on Shindell, who's face first on the mat on the near side. Starachi actually trying to turn Shindell over. Shindell giving it everything he has though to not go down. Fans starting to sense it, Starachi Try to get it on the gusto, has that arm tightly wrapped around of Shindell. And finally a whistle from the official. He had that arm in a really tight clutch, Adriana. Yeah, it was about to be dangerous if the ref, if the ref didn't blow the whistle. And now a dangerous position for Shindell. Sriracha on top. Once again, gonna have that leverage for this final 60 second span that sees him leading 12 to three via a few takedowns, now just pressing down, using his legs to wrap that leg of Shindell, trying to now turn Shindell over and join the pin party that we've seen thus far in Happy Valley this afternoon. Strachi pressing those hands down of Shindell, just riding the back of him, looks pretty content, but the ever calculated veteran trying to turn Shindell over. Had that one shoulder down for just a moment there, but not enough to substantiate anything. Using those legs, trying to now shoot over Shindell. Looks at the clock, sees he's got just under about 20 seconds to go in the first period. See if he tries for one last push for the pin in the final 10 seconds. Instead, starting to get onto his knees and just press up a little bit. So time will expire in the first period, and honestly, it's a win for Shindell, who avoids being tech falled in the first and avoids being pinfalled. But Carter Sirachi doing what he's done best, really for his entire tenure for the blue and white, minus maybe a few glaring holes. Sirachi has been perfect. Yeah, and a great effort by Shindell, too, is able to get on the board with three points, and you're facing the number one wrestler in the nation in your weight class. So Shindell, with everything against him, has been looking strong so far. Sirachi coming, firing out of the gate yet again. 12-3, the advantage as we enter the second period over two minutes of riding time for Sirachi, but he wants more. He's going for at least the tech fall, maybe the pin. Once again, has that arm clutched in. We saw him try this on the near side of the mat, now in the center of the mat, trying to flip Shindell over with that dangerous clutch on that arm. Just kind of bullying Shindell around that center of the mat with that tight arm grip and just trying to win Will Shindell over and go for the pin? And once again, a whistle. And Shindell, a tough battle, and is being drugged through by Sirachi right now, especially in that tough clutch on his arm, cannot feel good. Yeah, you actually, we picked it up on our audio. Somebody, I'm assuming one of the officials said, watch that arm. So Sirachi trying to put this one to bed. In the center of the mat, 
just pressing down. And now upwards of two minutes and 50 seconds of riding time, 12-3, the advantage for Starachi. Shindell doing everything he can to avoid being teched and avoid being pinned. He's just pressing down, biding time. Now he's got that arm in tow. Strachi going for the gusto, going for 60 straight. Can he get there? Had Shindell in the most precarious position he had had him yet, but another whistle and the official talking to Strachi, saying, hey, watch it. Whether it be the arm or getting a little too close to the head, Strachi going hard to try to end this one early. He saw his previous two wrestlers do it, Mitchell, Brink, uh, Mitchell Messenbrink and Levi Haynes. Curtis Starachi wants in. He wants this one to be over quickly. So Starachi talking to the coaching staff, talking to Coach Sanderson. having some issues with this headgear and just trying to catch his breath and collect himself. Strachi, that discipline ever composed. You're here in the crowd, say some things, but Strachi just calm, cool, and collected. That's what, that's what you have to be in wrestling. Strachi, like you mentioned, a role model, has a really great mindset. 22 point advantage for the Indian Lions overall, 26 to four. We continue the action here in the second period. Strachi not letting Shindell get away. Shindell trying to escape, trying to evade Strachi. Fresh set of headgear and had that opportunity to take his breath. And Shadell goes out of bounds and a point awarded to Cordo Sirachi after he goes out on that far side of the mat. So a 10 point advantage, three minutes plus of riding time advantage. Can say that that point is now locked up in all likelihood, giving him about an 11 point advantage. Still close to that tech fall territory, but you know, he could taste blood in the water, would love the pin here. Shindell doing a great job though. Astrachi just pressing him down. Not giving Astrachi anything until nearly right there. You heard the gasps, you heard this place brewing, ready to erupt yet again, but saved by, well, the bounds. Going out there is Shindell. And with 12 seconds left, might have just saved himself from being pinned here in period two. A valiant effort by Starachi, pushing Shindell over towards the edge of the mat. And you heard those fans who were right by get up and start to exclaim, but then realize that there was no pin. And you heard that, oh, from the crowd. Another point awarded to Starachi as Shindell goes out on that far side. Less than a second to go in period two. Starachi's went from just pressing down and pressing that weight on his back. Now that he has riding time solidified, he's actually now just using his hands to push Shindell down and putting some of that weight from his upper body in, but not on the ground as much anymore. They'll reset the clock to two seconds to go here in period two. Strachi will start on top and just let time expire. So we'll have a third period here. We'll have two minutes as Carter Strachi looking to put Shindell away, either by tech or by pitfall. Actually gonna elect to start in neutral position. Shindell, Strachi. Those active legs, quick hands, dangerous combo. Once again, Shindell goes out. And now two points awarded to Strachi. 13 point advantage, approaching tech fall territory as Shindell keeping the gas up, trying to evade Strachi and avoid being pinned. Now Strachi, maybe one last shot to get a pin before he secures a tech fall. Strachi got that neck wrapped around. Getting more aggressive here. He was patient, this time trying to put Shindell away. Has that neck completely controlled by that left arm in the center of the mat. Shindell kicking the legs, going round and round. Sirachi moving with him. And eventually securing three more points and putting this one to bed. That makes it 60 straight for Carter Sirachi. The winner by Tech Fall gives it a Large, large advantage for the Nittany Lions, securing five more points, making it 31 to four. Sirachi was disciplined, took those opportunities, tried to get the pins, but eventually will just secure the tech ball win. All credit to Shindell for surviving. He's gassed over there, 
but he put up a heck of an effort against the number one ranked wrestler at 174. Yeah, Shindel definitely put up a fight, but it was all Carter Starachi all day long. There's, n It's very hard to beat Starachi, especially in his home environment. So Carter Starachi secures the win. Mitchell Messenbrink erupted the place with a pin. And coming into the second half of action here from Rec Hall, Penn State is firing at all cylinders. We will see Bernie Truax, Aaron Brooks, and AJ Frichione for the Nittany Lions with three matches to go. We'll step aside for just a moment here on Big Ten Plus. Penn State holding a huge advantage over the Hofstra Pride. Carter Sirachi securing his 60th straight win via tech fall. Mitchell Messenbrink, Levi Haynes all of a pin, and everything has gone blue and white sway for most of the contest. Dylan Price alongside Adriana Gallucci. It's been a controlled performance from the number one ranked team in the nation as they host Hofstra. Noah Tapia, the only one to get on the board for the Pride this evening. Otherwise, it would be a flawless performance from the Nittany Lions. We'll see. Truax here in just his second performance in front of this rec hall crowd gets a quick takedown. He'll go up against Will Conlon, the Hoover, Alabama native with a three and six record. Another freshman being trotted out here by the pride. Truax, another transfer from Cal Poly, had his first taste of the rec hall environment last Sunday when he put forth a dominant, dominant win in front of this crowd. 3-1 as Conlon able to tack on, a point by an escape, but then Truax puts three more on the board via a takedown. 19-4 tech fall with five takedowns scored and over three minutes of riding time for Bernie Truax, the Oceanside California native, in his home debut. 4-0 record on the campaign for the graduate transfer. His career at Cal Poly, he was a three-time All-American and two-time Pac-12 champ, so taking these accolades over to Happy Valley. Conlon. Nabs in escape, so 6-2 the score as Truax trying to grab that lower body. Credit to Conlon, who has the lower body of Truax and not giving him too much leverage here, but Truax able to push him down for the takedown. 9-2 now, the advantage extended to by the veteran. At a minute 40 to go here in the onset at 184. And about 30 seconds and counting of riding time now being built up here by Truax. Said, similar to Messenbrink, how excited he was to come to Penn State and experience the energy, which he said is unlike anything other and is so different. And maybe trying to erupt this place just like his fellow transfer Messenbrink did with a pin a little bit earlier. He's got a shoulder down. Can he get two? Truax, the pin and the win. Bernie Truax. Just like his fellow transfer, Mitchell Messenbrink, tabs a pin, the third for the Nittany Lions on the afternoon at Penn State, dominating and in complete control. Truax, Messenbrink, and Haynes sending this place into a frenzy. Three pins on the day for the Nittany Lions, and Truax said, let's get this one done early. Truax, Haynes, and Messenbrink, as Adriana mentioned, all three getting pins, all three getting pins in the first period. Dominant performances from two of the transfers, and one of the returners, and Cale Sanderson has to be happy with the performance put forth by his guys this afternoon. Bernie Truax was just talking about that energy that he was so excited to experience, despite being a two-time Pac-12 champion, getting his first taste of a Big Ten wrestling environment here in Happy Valley, where he is on the home side. But a guy who is no stranger to the environment, 
but gets his first taste of it this season is Aaron Brooks. Brooks would not go last week. Luke, Lewis Cochran would go in his place. He would take care of that 197 spot for the time being, but now Brooks will get his first taste of action in front of the Rec Hall crowd on the campaign. Aaron Brooks, the reigning defending NCAA champion, four-time All-American, was 17-1 and last year, 3-0 in the young season, making his season debut in front of the Rec Hall crowd. He'll go up against Nicholas Miller, the junior, a bit of a homecoming of sorts as well for Nicholas Miller, the Lock Haven, Pennsylvania native. With that two and four record on the season, coming back home and going up against one of the nation's very best in Brooks. Some hand fighting on the left side of the mat. Brooks kicks the legs out, nabs a takedown on Miller and jumps out to a three, nothing advantage. We've seen the pride sacrifice a lot of momentum early in these bouts this afternoon, giving up quick takedowns to these Nittany Lions wrestlers. Brooks on the back now here of Miller. 60 seconds in to the contest. It's been all bare Aaron Brooks thus far here at 197. Brooks allowing that escape to Miller. And as Adriana and I have mentioned, had the opportunity to talk to Levi Haynes this week. He said that's something you see so common with these Penn State wrestlers. Once they establish control and that advantage, they get those escapes to reset things up. Huge slam from Aaron Brooks, emphatically putting down Nicholas Miller, extending his advantage to six to one. Gave a point, got the points. Big takedown there from Aaron Brooks, able to pick up Miller and slam him down onto the mat. It's not every day you see that. Picks things up and puts them down. Aaron Brooks, over a minute and a half of action thus far in his rec hall debut on the campaign. And so far, been a warm welcome. 6-1 advantage, 65 seconds to go in the first period. Now over a minute of riding time established by Brooks on that far side of the mat, just pressing his upper body down into Miller's back. But still, those active legs of Brooks trying to flip over Miller. He's got that arm in clutch and trying to see if he can drag Miller over and secure what would be the fourth Penn State pinfall victory on the afternoon. Bit of a desperation position from Miller here as he's trying to stave off Brooks, maybe even get an escape in these latter 30 seconds or so of the first period. No escape here, but they'll go back to the center of the mat and Brooks We'll start on top here with about 30 seconds to go. Brooks, just like his teammates, seeing if he can maybe put this one away early. But Miller, the Lockhaven native, trying to survive in his return to Pennsylvania. Under 20 seconds to go here in the opening period. Brooks allows Miller to reposition a little bit here, but just making Miller wear his weight as he tries to get up and get that escape. Now on the near side near the scorer's table, Brooks, they're working towards that out of bounds mark. They eventually do go out, but Brooks was just kind of Taking Miller for the ride with him there. Aaron Brooks will have two seconds here. Kind of similar to what Carter Strach did in the second period of his contest. Just going to let that last seconds tick off the clock. But Aaron Brooks coming out firing early, 6-1 advantage. A great performance from Aaron Brooks so far. Some of his accolades. He's a four-time All-American. He's a Big Ten champion. He won Big Ten Freshman of the Year during his first year. He's also a 2023 NCAA champion. So, like Starachi, he's one of those beloved wrestlers here at Penn State. Brooks, a veteran, as we've talked about, some of the fresh faces on this squad. He's been here a while, but still, nothing like performing at home. One of the biggest things he's emphasized in this campaign and shoots the leg, gets a quick takedown, and extends the advantage to nine to one. Gonna let Miller pop back up, get the escape. And now, see if in this second period where he's established over two minutes of riding time, he might be able to secure a tech or a pin and put this one to bed. 
Brooks hand fighting with Miller. Miller will drop down now. Brooks will match and punch for punch. And Brooks brings him down again for another takedown. 10 point advantage. Now try to use that lower body with that upper body in tow and see if he can flip the shoulder over. At the very least, get some points for an ear fall, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, join the pin party in Happy Valley. He's got that shoulder pressed down now. Brooks using that active lower body, trying to turn him over. Give Miller all the credit in the world. He is staving him off thus far. But finally, Aaron Brooks puts this one to bed. Aaron Brooks in his season debut in front of the Rec Hall crowd secures Penn State's fourth pin of the contest, putting down Nicholas Miller with a big win in front of the home crowd. Great performance by Aaron Brooks, able to win by pinfall. And again, all the credit in the world to Miller and the rest of the Hofstra pride. They have been going up against the number one team in the nation on an away turf, one of the rowdiest environments in collegiate wrestling. They've been doing a great job staving off these Penn State wrestlers, but not enough to get the wins. One more bout to go at the heavyweight level, coming in just a few moments. Still unsure if Hofstra will bring out number 21 ranked Keaton Kluver or Danny Church, the Erie, Pennsylvania native. We might be able to see another Pennsylvanian on display this afternoon, but for the Nittany Lions, it'll be A.J. Frigione, the freshman from Duria, Pennsylvania, had 108 wins in his high school career. Talented heavyweight, one of the guys who will be the fabric of the future, and Greg Kirkfleet, one of the very best in the heavyweight division for these past four years, will get a bit of a rest today in front of the home crowd in a match and a duel that's already really been put away for Penn State. 43 to four, the advantage. Four pinfalls, three tech falls, and a major decision, and I don't know, a partridge and a pear tree too. Penn State has been performing very well this afternoon. Hofstra getting four points on the board via the major decision, as you see that graphic on your screen that was tabulated by Noah Tapia. Adriana, one match to go, but for the Penn State crowd, not a lot going home. They want to stay and see if they can witness one more pinfall maybe, or just, just some more great wrestling action. We're going to have to see Penn State starting A.J. Fritchione in place of Greg Kirkfleet. We saw Kirkfleet last weekend against Lehigh. He won with a major decision. So as you said, Dylan, giving Kirkfleet some time off, going to start Fritchione, who went to Bergen Catholic. Four-time New Jersey State qualifier, though he is a Pennsylvania native, so a little bit of a homecoming for Fritchione as well. And then we're going to see who Hofstra is going to start. But Penn State crowd hoping for one more pinfall or one more great win. Adriana Hofstra. It's Coach Pavadados talking after that Ohio State loss about the fact that they scheduled Penn State, they scheduled Ohio State, and they scheduled NC State with intent. They wanted to give their guys some top-level competition to help them acclimate into that EIWA competition in this latter part of the season. Still a lot of time left. This is just the second duel of the season for both sides, but they've got a long ways till EIWA duels, but you get the opportunity to go up against Penn State on their turf, practice in the Lorenzo Wrestling Complex yesterday. This is all about the experience for Hofstra. Coach Papadados will trot out Keaton Kluver, the number 21 ranked wrestler in the nation at heavyweight, and the lone ranked wrestler for Hofstra. He'll go up against Fritchione, the Duria, Pennsylvania native, underway here on the far side of the mat. Both big men jockeying for position, the graduate from Wisconsin, a three and one record for Kluver on the young season. Spent the beginning part of his career at UNC, then at Minnesota. Kluver, two and two last year, academic all Big Ten, as they go from far side to the near side of the mat. And eventually go out of bounds. No points either way thus far in this big man clash between Fritchione and Kluver. As we mentioned, Fritchione get an opportunity to go up against a top heavyweight here. The youngster, not seen a ton of action yet. Kluver here, working against the youngster, grabbing that right leg and pushing down now with the weight of Fritchione, but Fritchione able to grab that upper body of Kluver on that left side of the mat and press down on Kluver. Now, Fritchione in a very nice spot here, had Kluver in control for a moment there, but Kluver able to get the takedown and reverse it. Kluver now making Fritchione wear his weight in a big way. 
starting to establish that riding time. Upwards of 15 seconds tabulated by Kluver in this final match of what has been a terrific, terrific afternoon of action. Frigione gets on the board for the point. 3-1, your score. Adriana, what does Frigione have to do here against the ever dangerous veteran in Kluver to maybe pull off the unthinkable and send the fans home maybe even happier than they already are? Yeah, again, Kluver is such a great wrestler. He's 21 in the nation in the heavyweight class. If you're Frigione, you have to come out here in front of this Penn State crowd and you really have to give it your all. Even though you're behind right now, you still have periods to go. So a whistle as both men go out of bounds on that right side of the mat. Back in the center with about 70 seconds to go in this heavyweight clash, punctuating what has been a fun day of wrestling here from Happy Valley. So glad you could hang with us and make us a part of your Sunday afternoon. Frigione making his debut here in front of the Rec Hall faithful against the top-ranked Kluver, one of the very best in the nation. Kluver able to score another takedown, now making Frigione wear down with that weight, just pressing down all of his upper body onto Frigione's back in the center by the Penn State logo. 6-1 your score with under 30 seconds to go in the first period and nearing a minute of riding time tabulated by Kluver. 43-4, the dual advantage for Penn State. They've got the win secured, they'll go to 2-0, but Hofstra and Kluver trying to get their second win of the afternoon. Kluver allowed Frichione to kind of get on his knees here. Now both men up on their legs, but Kluver holding that midsection of Frichione. Frichione stumbling a little bit, but escapes nonetheless. Time expires, and Frichione lost his footing, gets the escape. Kluver tried to capitalize after Frigione fell down in the center of the mat, but time saving Frigione here in a 6-2 bout. Frigione still got a strong chance. They start in neutral here, but Kluver coming out of the gates and getting an early lead. Seeing Kluver be just the second representative of the Pride this afternoon to get a takedown. Tapia the other. It's worked well for the Pride when they, get through, they do get the takedowns with Tapia being the lone winner in this afternoon. Kind of just swerving around Frigione there, whips him down for another takedown. 9-2 advantage, seven points. The deficit for Frichione as Kluver doing a terrific job. He established dominance early against the freshman in his first bout. And now just pressing down on Frichione's upper body. Tried to turn Frichione over, but Frichione rolls away. Beautiful escape from the freshman. And can take a sigh of relief as nearly had both shoulders down there for a moment, but the risky maneuver pays off and Frigione survives. Great last minute escape points from Frigione. We saw one at the end of the first period and just another great one right there. Kluver pushing down Frigione again. Make that another takedown. Nine point advantage now for Kluver. On that right side of the mat under a minute to go in this second period and nearing two minutes of riding time. Accumulated by Kluver. Kluver just pressing down on Frigione again as the crowd trying to will the freshman on. 108 wins in his high school career for Frichione. Helped lead his team to the New Jersey State team title in 2022. He was a four-time state qualifier, talented freshman. But Kluver, the graduate, the veteran, puts him to bed. So Keaton Kluver getting some moral points, getting something to take forward, and getting a win over for Gion here on the road. Keaton Kluver has his hand raised, but the win will go to Penn State as he gets a pinfall victory. Just one of two victors for Hofstra this afternoon. Noah Tapia, Keaton Kluver getting the win column, but everybody else on Penn State coming out victorious. Four pins, incredible performance, incredible afternoon.